All right, so what's going on, y'all? Wanted to do one more uh, displacement uh, direct stiffness method problem for problem 217. This one is a five spring assemblage. So we have to determine displacements at nodes two and three and the reaction forces at nodes one and four. Uh, the bars are rigid and the vertical at nodes two and three, and it remains horizontal at all times, but slide left to the left and right. Uh, there's also a force at node three of a thousand newtons uh, to the right. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. It's the same as the other ones. It's nothing crazy. It's just in this case, we have more springs than we do nodes, but the process is the same. So let's go. All right, so this one's no different than the other ones we've been doing. Um, it just looks a little bit more complicated. This is the only time I've seen that we have more springs than nodes, but it doesn't really make a difference. Um, so the first step, right, it's always, it's your force is equal to K times displacement, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we have four nodes, right? One, two, there's, there's the same node right here. Three and four, the wall. So let's go ahead and draw the vector uh, F1X. Give me a second. F1X, F2X, F3X, and F4X. So this problem is easier in the sense that they don't ask for local element forces, so that's gonna save us a lot of time. But we will go ahead and do the global stiffness matrix. So it's gonna be nodes one, two, three, and four. Let's go ahead and do one, two, three, and four. Just give yourself some space. And the vector for displacement. That is U1, U2, U3, and U4. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and do the first spring. They labeled them for us. So this one has a value of 500 Newton per millimeter. And this is in Newtons, this force right here at node three. So there's really no point in converting millimeters to meters, but that just means this vector right here is in millimeters. This one is in, let me put the arrow, Newton per millimeter. And this means the force vectors in Newtons. All right, so again, the first spring is between nodes one and two. So you're gonna look at the rows and columns for one and two. So one, two, one, two. So it's these four right here and that value is 500. So it's 500, negative 500, negative 500 and 500. Cool, so that's the first one. The second one is between nodes two and three and that value is 300. So nodes two, three, two, three. That means it's this spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot, that value is 300. We're gonna add 300, negative 300, negative 300, and 300 to those four spots. So this becomes 800, negative 300, negative 300, and 300. All right, between nodes two and three, again, it's element three, which is this one right here, another 300. So now this becomes 1100, right? 1100, this becomes negative 600, negative 600 and 600. Okay, negative six, negative six and six. So that's that. Number four is between nodes three and four. So three, four, three, four, these four slots right here that value is 400 so let's go ahead and add that this is going to become a thousand negative 400 negative 400 and 400 finally between nodes two and four lies element number five and that value is also 400 so two and five uh two and four two four two four 
So it's going to be this 1100 is going to have an extra 400. That becomes 1400. This one right here is negative 400. This one becomes negative 400. And this one is an 800. Cool. So that's all of them. Fill in the zeros where you got to fill them in. Right. And now we do the boundary conditions. So just by looking at this right here, I see that nodes one and four are fixed to the wall. So that means no matter how much force you apply to the system, this will always be zero. It's never going to move. Displacement zero here and here. Okay, cool. So we got, um, and we're looking for U2 and U3. And these things, like the problem says, they're rigid vertical bars that remain horizontal. So they're just moving left and right as you apply a force here. So just by looking at this problem, there's no force at two. So that's already another load boundary condition. Um, but there's a thousand going on at node three to the right. So that means just by just kind of making sense of it, this force is gonna go that way and this one's gonna go this way too. Both of these are gonna go to the left and the sum of them should equal a thousand because there's nothing going on at node two. So check this out at force two is zero right nothing's going on at that node and then force three is positive a thousand because our assumption we're always using x's to the positive right all right uh this is a zero and this is a thousand right um and like i said in the other videos you know you're doing something right if at every node you either know force or displacement. You never know both and you never know neither. So in the first one, at first at node one and four, we don't know force, but we know displacement. Then at nodes two and three, we know force, but we don't know displacement. So that's gonna give us four equations and four unknowns. So F1X is 500 times zero. That is zero. Then negative 500 U2. And then zero times u3, zero times zero. Next one is zero is equal to negative 500 times zero. Um, 1400, was that right? No, no, this was 1500, right? It's 500 plus the 600, 1100 plus the 400, that is 1500. There we go. Ba -ba -bum. 1500 u2 right so it's negative 500 times 0 1500 times u2 negative 600 u3 minus 400 times 0 next one is a thousand and that is equal to negative 600 times u2 figured by now you know how to do this plus a thousand times u3 and yep and then finally, F4X is just equal to negative 400 U2 minus 400 U3. Okay, so four equations, four unknowns. If you have the calculator and you, you could use it, uh, I guess this is going to save you a lot of time. But let's go ahead and assume you don't or you can't use that calculator. Um, step three, what I'd like to do is first you focus on the equations that don't have forces. So in this case, just this one and this one. What I mean by forces is uh, where we don't know the force. So in this case, you usually have to find displacement first and then the forces come after. So in this case, we'll focus on equations two and three. So just by using equations two, this is my strategy. Whenever I just have two variables that I don't know, in this case u2 and u3, two equations. I'd like to solve for u2 or u3, doesn't matter, and then plug that into this one or this one, depending which one you solve for, then you get a number. So equation two is 1500 u2 is equal to 600 u3, right? Let's go ahead and solve for u2. Again, it doesn't matter which one, just any. Uh, 600 divided by 1500, that is 2 over 5, that's 0 0.4, U3. 
So we got this relationship. Now I'm gonna plug in this U2 into here. So step four, equation three. That is a thousand is equal to negative 600 times 0.4 U3, right? Plugged in U2 plus a thousand U3. All right, so that's that. Let's go ahead and solve. A thousand is equal to, that is 600 divided by five, that would be 120 times two, that is negative 240 U3. Plus a thousand U3. And then add those two, you get a thousand is equal to 760 U3. That means U3 moves 1.316. This is in millimeters, okay? So that's the answer for that, U3. All right, now that we know U3, you can plug it into here, get U2. If you do that, U2 is equal to 0 0.526 millimeters. All right, cool. Um, so next step, step five. Now that we have both U2 and U3, uh, which is what the problem was asking for, right? Determine displacements at nodes two and three. So that's two answers right there. Now it's asking for the reactions at nodes one and four. So one and four, just plug in U2 and U3. Um, for F1X, you will get negative 500 times U2. That's going to give you negative 263 newtons going to the right. Or it's the same as saying positive 263 newtons going to the left. All right. And finally, step six. Now find F4X. F4x is equal to negative 400 times U2, which is 0 0.5. 526 okay minus 400 times u3 which is 1.316 1 1.316 do the math you will get f4x is negative 210.4 minus 526.4 is going to be equal to negative 736.8, that's a six. There you go. And Newton's going to the right, always to the right at first. If you wanna switch the sign, F4X is equal to 736.8 Newton's going to the left. So now let's verify this. So an easy way to verify just do some of the forces in the x direction. You have a thousand going to the left, to the right, I mean, I'm sorry. So that means you should have a thousand going to the left. So 263 plus 736, that's gonna give you 999.8, which is a thousand. So that's just because of rounding errors, but it's a thousand, so this problem is solved. Um, Usually you'll go the extra step, right? Get the local element forces, but I guess they wanted to make our lives easier here. So, yep, that's the answer. That's the top part right there. And then this is the bottom part.